I did a video on the CSS grid from Elemental 3.13 yesterday, but I want to take it a step further with how we can refine some of the layout. What I'm talking about is can we span the items? Let me show you what I mean. We've got a really basic grid here with three columns and two rows. Remember, this is the beta version of 3.13. So if you haven't got that, you might not recognize anything we're doing here. Go and watch the previous video. I've also set my grid or the container it all sits within to have a width of 900 pixels. And I have also removed the gap between the row and column to be zero. So everything here is now nice 300 pixels wide. What if I want cell number four or grid four to stretch over to fill the gap between here? So I want four to go all the way over here and I want number five to be here. There's one way you can do that, but this is not the right way to do it. I'm gonna show you the way you should think about doing it, but let me show you the wrong way. I could go over to grid number four. If I type in minus 300 like that, can you see that this has now pushed it outwards? But the problem is now it's going underneath grid block number five or whatever we wanna call it. I'm going to go to grid block number five, go to the advanced tab. I'm going to do the same thing with give me minus 300 and it moves over. And then I'm going to say, give me 300 on the left. And what we now have is a different looking design. And you might look at that and go, hey, that's really, really good. That's wonderful. I could do the same to number two. Well, let me show you what would happen if we applied that same logic. Now, the first thing I do want to point out though, before I go and change this up here, this is cell number four. Can you see the pencil? Cell number five is not actually here. It's actually sat there. So if you click it, that is still referring to number five. It's just that it's been moved over. Now this can get quite complicated if you're not careful because you might start, you might copy this, the style, thinking that is cell four. It's not, that is actually cell five. But let me now show you what would happen if we were to replicate this. So I'm gonna pick up cell four and I'm gonna paste it over here for the style. So what we now, ignore the color change because I'm just pasting the style. It's now gone over to stretch over 600 pixels. But if I was to now go to cell five, remember this is where cell five is and I now paste the style here. Look what it's gone and done. It's gone and completely moved it out of the 900 pixel boxed width that I set out. This is not the way you wanna be doing it. Really what you want is for cell three to wrap. Now at the moment inside of the loop grid, sorry, not the loop grid, the grid, CSS grid, we don't have a spanning feature. And you can start messing around with justify alignment and all of these items here. It ain't gonna help you, okay? Grid block number three is gonna sit outside. So let's just put everything back to how it was before. What we're gonna do is get cell three to wrap and basically be in the position of cell number four. Well, how do we do that? It's actually really, really simple and easy. So I'm gonna go over to cell number three. I'm gonna to go to advanced uh, tab, go down to custom CSS, and I'm gonna paste in this code. And the code is very, very simple. As soon as I paste it, cell number three or grid three has now moved over onto the next row. This is all it is, selector grid column one, one. Now the first number is basically where you start and the second number is where you end. Now with whenever you have the cell on the furthest left, whether you put in a number one or a number two, it makes very little difference. But let me just clarify, if I was to change this to be one, three, it starts at position one and it goes over to point three. Now you're gonna look at this and go, but it's only up to the first two cells. You gotta think of the points where they kind of interconnect or intersect. So we've got point one, point two, point three, and point four. So if I was to change this to now be one, four, we go one, two, three, four and it starts at position one. If I was to go here and change this to be a two, it starts at one, two, and then it goes all the way to where four would have been. Now you might look at this and go, yeah, but the width has changed. Why is it not carried over? Because that's just not how it works. If I was to go and change this to be a five, it's not gonna go outside of the area or the estate that it's built within. If I pop this back to be grid column one to one, you can, you can see it's now wrapped it onto the next row. I'm gonna pick that code up. I'm gonna go over to cell number five, go down to advanced or uh, the custom CSS, and I'm gonna drop in again. 
And what it's now done is moved it over, giving it a height of 500. And I've also increased a row as well, because if you leave it like that, again, it's a little bit narrow. So again, just bear that in mind if it doesn't look right. So I'm now going to go to cell number four. And again, I'm just going to modify the layout. So for cell four, I want it to start at position number two and I want it to end at position number four. If I had put in a one, it would automatically wrap it onto the next line because now it goes, well, I can't start at one because there's already an item there. So it automatically wraps it. And if I was to go over here, in fact, I'm just gonna copy this code and drop that in there. We now start to have a very unique looking design. Now, of course, you're gonna say, yeah, but you could have just said do two columns and then just made it be 300 pixel and 600 pixel. I just wanna get the point over that we now have a lot of flexibility with what you want to do here. I mean, look, if I get rid of the selector in cell number five, I've got that. And what if I want to make cell number one be actually two cells or two fill up two rows? I'm going to go over here, make sure I'm in the custom CSS, and I'm now going to, instead of using grid column, I'm going to use grid row. By the way, I've realized now that as I was typing it, I missed out the semicolon. Make sure you got the semicolon at the end there. So this is selector grid row one to three. So remember the intersecting points, one, two, three. So if I was to now go over to column number four and I add to this code with a grid row two, three, can you see what number four did? Let me just undo that. So this is where it currently sits because we've extended number one. And when I paste this in now, cell four starts at number two and ends at three. So one, two, it starts here and it ends at number three. And for cell five, I'm gonna add in a bit more. So I'm gonna say start at position three in terms of the columns that end at four. So it goes like there. And then for the row, start at number two and go down to four. We now have a completely different looking layout going on here. Just by adding in, it's what we call kind of like spanning in a way which isn't built in at the moment, but you can do this really easily with a tiny bit of CSS code. I hope this kind of makes you want to explore and play around a little bit more. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life. Have no shame, there's no time for the pain. Let the grind, I could change in my mind. Pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win it life. I never miss that stack. Taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat. Put me in the ring.